So the Detroit Lions have selected TJ Hawkinson with the 8th overall pick. It's a solid pick. I wouldn't say I love it, but solid. If Hawkinson, if Hawkinson is who he has been advertised to be, then I'll change my mind. At least on the field. If he's who he's been advertised to be when he the season starts, then I'm going to change my mind immediately. Now the reality is that we probably won't know if it's a good pick or a bad pick until after the season, or maybe not even until another three years down the line. But the reason I don't love the pick is because of uncertainty. Can Hawkinson come in and have an immediate impact? Ebron wasn't impactful until his second season. Heh. <laughs> he wasn't even that impactful in his second season. But, like, can Hawkinson just come in and have second season Ebron type of impact in his rookie season? I guess we'll see. I mean, he does have Stafford, so who knows what'll happen. If Hawkinson can give us around 40 catches for, like, 500, 600 yards and, like, three to four touchdowns his rookie year, I'll, I'll love it, man. Like, O.J. Howard, his rookie year, had 26 catches for 432 yards and six touchdowns. Gronkowski had 42 receptions for 546 yards, 10 touchdowns. Kittle, his rookie year, had 43 catches for 515 yards and two touchdowns. If we can just get that kind of production out of Hawkinson this year, then great. That will be great. We don't need him to produce at a Pro Bowl level his rookie year. Just produce enough. I mean, and that also, I'm probably thinking a little too much about the immediate season the you draft for the future and Hawkinson just because he doesn't have an impact immediately doesn't mean he can't be good but I don't know I guess I'm being too narrow visioned I guess I mean I I do expect Hawkinson to be a Pro Bowl tight end in this league if he is as good as advertised if he's as good as run blocking and whatnot as he has been advertised to be but I want to compare Ebron's best season at North Carolina and Hawkinson's best season at Iowa in Hawkinson's sophomore season, he had 49 catches for 760 yards and 6 touchdowns. Ebron, in his junior season, had 62 catches for 973 yards and 3 touchdowns. Ebron was a bit more productive, but Ebron was a junior that season, and Hawkinson is coming in with only two years of college experience. And Hawkinson did have more touchdown receptions than Ebron that year. But Hawkinson is supposedly a better blocker, so that's huge for the running game. I mean, if Hawkinson, if this pick is able to help us have a top 12 running game, give us four, five to 600 yards receiving, then this is a spectacular pick. And that's like immediate impact right there. And that's all I wanted. And all honesty, Luke G. Go watch Luke G, guys. He's a great, great line YouTuber. I'll even link him in the description for you. But I think he'll do a better job of explaining why this is such a great pick. I don't love it enough to say why it's such a great pick, but Luke G has all the answers. You gotta go check him out. But this upcoming season, like, if we can just get a top 12 running game and a defense that can be top 12 in scoring, the team's going to be in great shape. Like, I'm not even talking a top 5 scoring defense or a top 5 running game or top 10 or any of that stuff. Not even the top 10, just top 12. Heck, maybe even top 13. Nah, I don't know. I mean, that's already, I mean, top 12, top 13 is already, having both at the same time, that's something Stafford's never had in his career. When he had a good defense, he had a terrible running game. I mean, there's there's always a black hole somewhere on the team. And hopefully this year we can have no black holes. Just consistent all-around play from both teams. I think that's all I have to say. Salt pick. We'll see what happens with it. But, yeah, thank you all for watching. And stay tuned for my next episode of Why Matthew Stafford is a Super Bowl Caliber Quarterback.